Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Light. Today I'm going to be answering the question, is cold calling illegal? So in short, no, it's not illegal, uh, but there are a lot of restrictions on what you can and can't do. So let me start with the main law that governs cold calling, the TCPA, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, passed in 1991, updated in 2003. Basically what this law said is if you're cold calling residential phone numbers, there are a few different rules that you have to follow. So there are certain times that you can and cannot cold call. You can't use pre-recorded messages. You can't use artificial voices. Um, it was updated later to basically say the same thing about cell phones, but it also added that you can't use an auto dialer system to cold call cell phones. So that's actually a big one for those of you doing B2B cold calls. If you're cold calling a cell phone, you can't use an auto dialer system. Now there's a few other rules, regulations, but the main thing about the TCPA is it mostly applies to individuals or consumers. Um, so what it doesn't do is restrict B2B cold calling. So it doesn't really say much about cold calling companies. Now this was good back at when the law first passed because there was a clear divide. You know, you had business phone numbers and you had residential phone numbers. The TCPA basically said, hey, here's all these rules about residential phone lines. This is what you can and can't do. It didn't really say anything about businesses. However, that line has kind of been blurred now that cell phones are used for both. So a lot of small businesses, they use their cell phone. The business owner might list their cell phone as the main number. So a lot of these laws still apply even though it is B2B. Uh, so it's important to be careful just because you're a B2B cold caller doesn't mean these laws don't apply because if you're cold calling someone's cell phone, um, you still need to be careful about abiding by these laws. And of course, I'm not a lawyer, so if you really want a detailed explanation of what you can and cannot do, or if you want to see if your cold calling strategy is legal, you'll have to contact a lawyer. Um, but I just want to put my thoughts out there on exactly what is okay and what isn't okay. And more importantly, I want to put my thoughts out there on what you should do to kind of adapt. So besides the pre-existing laws, coronavirus has changed a few of the ways that you can and can't make cold calls. So a big one here is that certain states, when they're under a state of emergency, which a lot of states are right now, you actually cannot cold call at all. So New York, for example, it's completely illegal to make unsolicited cold calls during a state of emergency. Even if you're not in New York, if you're cold calling people that live in New York, this law applies. Um, however, it's not extremely clear on if they mean businesses because they, they basically say you can't cold call individual persons. However, once again, the line is kind of blurred, right? Because if you're calling, calling someone's cell phone, that's probably going to fall into the prohibited category. Once again, if you really want to know exactly what you can and can't do, you have to contact a lawyer, but you do have to be careful about this. The other thing that's super important for B2B cold callers to know is recording conversations. Um, so I know that a lot of CRMs and auto dialers, they allow you to record phone calls automatically. What you should be aware of is that in 15 states, it's actually illegal to record a conversation without the permission of the other person involved in the call. So 35 states, you're allowed to record. Um, they're called one party consent laws. Basically, if you're making a cold call and you're recording it, it's fine. You don't have to tell the other person. Um, however, in 15 states, which are called all party consent states. Um, you have to alert the person that you're recording and get their permission to record the call. Um, so that's something to be careful of. Even if you're not in one of those states, if you're cold calling someone in one of those states, you have to be careful um, of that. So basically you have to be aware of these laws. You have to, there's a lot of exceptions, a lot of rules. Um, you can be fined several thousand dollars for each violation. So in New York, if you violate their rules about telemarketing during a pinch, during the crisis, um, you can be fined up to $8,000. And don't think that this is just something only the government can enforce. So I've seen a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm a small business, the FTC is not really going to care about what I do, right? So I'm just going to do it anyway. That's probably true. However, um, individual parties can enforce this law by suing you. So I've seen a lot of cases of just individual cold callers or small companies getting sued and being forced to settle for several thousand dollars for violating these laws. There's also things called litigator traps where litigators will actually put out business listings and list the phone number for that business and basically catch you breaking the law, uh, whatever it is. You know, maybe it's a cell phone and you're calling that cell phone and so that's what they get you for. The other important thing to keep in mind is that you're supposed to keep a do not call list 
registry. I mean, so there's the national do not call registry. So you have to double check your list against that. You also have to keep your own do not call list. So if someone asks to not be called ever again, you have to keep them on your list and honor that request. So the bottom line here is there's a lot of laws. You really have to be aware of the specific laws in the states that you're calling into. You know, there's really no easy answers to putting together a completely compliant plan because there's all sorts of rules, all sorts of laws. A few of them can be interpreted in different ways. What I would recommend is you should never rely 100% on cold calling for your business. If anything, you should be moving away from cold calling if you can. I think cold calling works. However, there's so many other ways to build a business, to build a brand, to get customers without having to cold call all day long. Um, so what I recommend is put out content on what you're an expert in, network and interact with people on social media. Um, basically putting out content and establishing yourself as an expert I think is the best way to build a business. I mean, it might take a lot longer, um, but what you do when you actually build an audience and when you're uh, putting out valuable content is you are extremely valuable, right? So it's easier to get customers. You don't have to beg people to do business with you. You don't have to cut your prices because if people understand why you're valuable, they're going to be eager to work with you. So what I'd be doing is moving more towards building your brand online, using um, online acquisition methods to get leads if you can. Cold calling can be kind of supplemental, but um, you really do have to be aware of the laws. It, again, if you guys are really interested in what you can and can't do, contact a lawyer um, to get a specific idea of what you're not allowed to do. If you want me to answer other questions about outbound sales, about building a sales team, about getting customers, feel free to put those in the comments below. Um, other than that, guys, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.